United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. This uh, public comment is the first section of the agenda. This is to receive oral communications from members of the public. Members of the public may address the select board for up to three minutes, longer with the permission of the chair. The select board shall not engage in discussion on topics raised during the public comment, but may choose to add the topic to a future agenda. This agenda segment will be limited to 15 minutes unless extended at the discretion of the chair. Do we have any public comment tonight? Hi, Tony. How are you guys? Long time no see. Oh, yeah. I miss all you guys. Uh, so, name and, and address. Please. So my name is Donald Jarvis. I am no longer a Newbury resident, unfortunately. I, today I live in Bradford. However, I came to share a story, and thanks. I may get a little emotional, so I apologize. Um, so, so I just came in rushed. Um, back in 2012, I did live in Newbury. And uh, in 2006, I also lived in Newbury when I joined the Army. And I joined the National Guard here in Newburyport. Deployed to Iraq, 07, 08. 11, 12, I went to Afghanistan. 2012, February 13th, I was struck by 250 pounds of explosives in Afghanistan that rolled my vehicle, sent me to Germany for a week, and then sent me to the hospital for six months. Coming home, I came back to this community. You guys uh, embraced me, you changed me, and you guys really made me who I am today. Unfortunately, I moved, but there's a little story that ties me back to Newbury that happened last year. So, although I was hurt in 2012, um, I was not awarded the Purple Heart right away. However, I was awarded the Purple Heart last year, and um, it was actually here in Newbury where I found out I was a Purple Heart recipient. Um, my home of record of being injured was Newbury. And last May, I got the phone call from my aunt who has three properties here, one of them I lived in. She called me and said I had a few packages here from the government. Um, didn't know what it was, but I had a strong suspicion what it could be. I went over a house the week before Memorial Day, and I opened up this package. And it's the Purple Heart that was issued to me. Um, by the government with the citation, and I can tell you I broke down kind of emotionally crying here. Um, so I was in Arlington National Cemetery for Veterans Day last year when I ran into my good friend Brian Willett from the Military Order of Purple Heart, and again I broke down crying when he told me what Newbury was doing. Um, it means a lot to me. It was very emotional when I got it, and I'm getting emotional now, but um, I wanted to come before the board and kind of share this story, keeping it quick, um, but it, I was really, really touched that the board and, and Bill have taken this initiative um, to declare Newbury a Purple Heart community. Um, this is something that I would have done, and I'm sure you guys are aware of this. If, if I was here in Newbury, I'd be doing what Bill's doing. Um, so it, it means a lot, and I called Bill almost instantaneously and said I'd like to pay for the first sign, which I did. Um, so I wanted to come tonight. I saw it was on the agenda, and I just wanted to come and, and say thanks and share the little story. Well, thank you, thank you. Donnie. Thank you. Jack Ray, Vicky, 37 Larkin Road. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for your service, and thank you, Donnie, for sharing your story. It means a lot to everybody here, your sacrifice and Bill's sacrifice. As it is the Purple Heart Ceremony, there's a National Purple Heart Day, August 7th, that is de dedicated to this ceremony across the Commonwealth. Um, the ceremony is uh, August 7th and built accordingly. Um, March 29th, um, at five o'clock at night, I don't think serves the nature of what is should be done for this award. I think the day dedicated to it should be used to celebrate it, that rushing the event is unnecessary, I think, under every circumstance, and that 
Even the appearance of a conflict of interest under every circumstance is to be avoided. And the fact that, the, that this is being rushed under, under the current circumstances should be taken under consideration that there's a day dedicated to it and moving it up isn't necessary in light of what's been done. I offer that it's wonderful that Donnie has come, and I offer that also Karen Tyler, our Essex County Ex Executive Director of Veterans Services, is here, and that she also should be asked of her opinion of when the day should be celebrated, because this is more than a singular person's celebration of a day and not a particular war. It's about the Purple Heart in every war since George Washington established the medal. And that's why we have a national day about it. We don't do singular things for the Purple Heart. I'd just like you to take that into consideration and I offer the floor to Karen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen Tyler, the veteran service officer for the town. Um, so I want to, Bill um, spearheaded it, he initiated it, you know, he said, I want to make Newbury a Purple Heart community. And I was like, that's fantastic, you know, it's really a great idea, it's great for Newbury, it's great for the citizens, the residents, and all that, all who have served, and um, most importantly, those who got injured during combat. Um, so I was just, um, I was just saying that, you know, like he said, that there is a Purple Heart Day um, in August, and so I think that would be um, a great day to do like an unveiling, have a ceremony, um, spend some time and um, get community involvement, um, do time to get outreach and, you know, invite all the veterans, maybe we can identify, um, given that time frame, um, be able to identify some Purple Heart recipients that live in the town, um, so that way they could be honored also. Um, and so I, that's just one I wanted to share with you um, in case, you know, just an education piece if you didn't know um, that there is a Purple Heart Day. And so, um, but that being said, you know, I want to thank, you know, it was great that Bill brought this, you know, to the town. And you guys are really, um, I commend you for moving forward with it, doing the proclamation, and um, becoming a Purple Heart community. So, does anybody have any questions? Or Oh, you're not allowed to ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Are there any other citizens' concerns tonight? Hi. Come on up. Lonergan, uh, 38 Larkin Road. I'm here to be here and to say that we are here and our petition still stands and we do not want through traffic on Larkin Road. We don't feel like we're being heard. We don't feel like the safety case is being listened to. There is nothing to gain from Newbury opening this road through traffic. It is very dangerous. We hope to get a meeting that's not just the town meeting. Um, and we're looking for your guidance on how to have that conversation still. 333 of us, 335 of us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Bob Ross. I'm on 48 Central Street. Hey, Bob. Hi, how are you? I, um, <clears throat> Just wanted to say that I've, I haven't been to every meeting that has been on this topic, but in all the meetings I've come to, I still haven't seen one person from the neighborhood stand up and say they want this bridge. 335 people, I guess, signed a petition, and I'm sure there's children on that petition. They'll probably be in the neighborhood longer than some of us. It just, there is sort of this feeling that I'm getting that what people in the neighborhood want is not as important as what individuals who don't live in the neighborhood want. And I don't think that there's been, it doesn't seem to me like there's been an adequate amount of back and forth on some of the topics that have been raised. I thought, is Ms. Heavey, um, I thought she raised very pertinent questions last week. 
I think where she was going was, why is this clause in our self-interest in the town of Newberry? She wasn't asking whether it was in her self-interest. I think she was met with derision and obfuscation. She wasn't allowed to just say, I want to know why this is in the contract. I want to know why it's here. I want to know who put it here. You know, it could have easily been said, well, it was a negotiation with the contractor. The contractor wanted that in there. Um, it seems to me like that's where that was going. Uh, but it just seemed like she was being stonewalled. Uh, people were rolling their eyes at her. Um, it's just interesting to me because I'm not from this area, but where I'm from, they announce things. They say, we're going to have a New England-style town meeting. Okay? And everybody knows what that means, right? And I haven't been to one yet here, but what I have seen is that people from the neighborhood have come forward and said, we don't think this is necessarily a good idea. We'd like to explore other possibilities. Or, you know, can you do a traffic study when there's no traffic? Yes, you can. Okay, so, it, but those ideas just seem to fall on deaf ears because people's minds are already made up. And I just wanted to say, in my experience, in a small town like this, which is pretty much all my experience, um, it, that's unusual to me. Like, usually there's more give and take with the people that it's going to immediately affect. And I'm disappointed that I just haven't seen that. I don't know what it means. I don't, I've been here long enough to know that that's a pattern. I'm not going to say that. And I have a great deal of respect for anybody who, who puts themselves forth to be on this board. I think that's fantastic. We're lucky to have people like you who are willing to do it. But I do think people should be listened to. And I think the general impression in my neighborhood is that we haven't been. So I just wanted to put that forth and for what it's worth. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Um, we have time. What time is it? Like seven twelve. We have time for one more. Does anybody else here? <clears throat> Seeing none. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, the report of the chair. I signed the PR twenty two seventeen. And the VW2218, the PR2217 was for Julie O'Brien, and the VW2218 was an Amazon, Amazon bill. Um, we have some grants, gifts, and donations. There is um, a Council on Aging donation from the Friends of the Newbury Council on Aging for $10,695 that is earmarked <coughs> to be used for new Council on Aging space furnishings. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Uh, is Kate here tonight? I don't see her. Kate from the Friends I was hoping was going to be here tonight. But um, so um, the Newbury Council on Aging, the Friends of the Newbury Council on Aging, is um, their mission is to raise funds to support the Council on Aging in our, in our community. So this is right up there, their mission statement. So. Um, I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to send them a thank you letter to. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Council on Aging donation for Joyce Duffy, $10. $10. Council on Aging donation for Alan and Mary Fisk, $5. And a Council on Aging donation from Ray and Avril Merrick for $5. five dollars. Uh, motion to accept. Second. <coughs> Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, where Cindy Currier is here, our Council on Aging uh, Director. Can, do, you, you, do you send in a thank you note to everyone? That it doesn't matter if it's a dollar or $10,000. I send a thank you note every time. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay, so public hearings are none. New business. We have approved requests for property for public property use for Manterfield, Purple Heart Town Recognition ceremony for Bill DeMeo. Um, before we move on to the request for the public property use, um, I had Julie pull the minutes from our, our um, November 23rd meeting when we, um, when Bill first brought this to the board to endorse the proposal to declare Newbury as a Purple Heart town. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, motion, JR had a move to um, endorse it. Jeff had seconded. Bill had explained, pa passed out in information on it. Um, I read the pro proclamation. And then, Jerry, you had made a secondary motion to give a $400 tax abatement to Newbury veterans. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. And so we tabled this. Yes. Um, so we had never, so Jeff had moved to table the motion and JR seconded it. So we never voted on it to become a purple, I mean, a, we, to ta actually become a purple hat community. So um, we did look into the property tax, and I know um, Jerry and I got copied, but I don't know if the rest of the I board. Didn't got copied or anything. Oh, all right. Well, uh, um, so the, I'll have that forwarded, but there was, um, because the town of Newbury voted, and I don't know when it is. You know when we voted in to have veterans have a tax abatement, Tracy? It's a, it's a state exemption. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's a Massachusetts general law exemption that all veterans have get a $400 tax break, um, tax abatement. And to become a Purple Heart recipient, you have to be a veteran, so they're already getting the abatement. So that's been settled. Why we, can't they get an additional one? That's that's my whole point. Give them another, you know, it's, it's nice to have signs saying we're a purple heart town, but let's put some money in their pocket, especially now with the cost of gas going up. That was my point, which you people tabled. I'm sorry you didn't, uh, that, that wasn't wasn't clear to me. Um, it just says, Jerry Heavey moved to give a $400 tax abatement to Newbury veterans who have earned the purple heart in their property tax. Um, that's already been given. So you wanted to give, that's not what this motion says, it's an additional $400. Yes. Okay. Um, that's not what was moved and seconded, so. Uh, it's, it's quite clear what was moved and seconded. Yeah. And I don't Jerry moved to give a $400 tax abatement to Newbury veterans, that they already have that. So I guess we sponsored can look into it again. Sponsored by the state, so I, I want this sponsored by the town. Lisa? Um. So I, I would need to look at the exemptions. Um, Jerry, as you probably know, there's a whole list of mm -hmm. possible exemptions for communities to adopt if they want them to be local. But any exemption would have to be on that list and for it to be accepted. So I don't know if there's an additional exemption. So I'm, I'm happy to look at that. That would be great for if you. you could. Yeah. Thank you. OK. okay. Yes, Mike? Um, new report has done something. And I, I know they've gone above, above the 4%. Uh, George Rolfe would be the person, uh, Attorney Me, you want me want to talk to? He's on. He's on Bromfield Court. He did a lot of work with the City Council. Yeah, I, I can. It'll also yeah. be in the statute. Yeah, so. but I'm just. But it a, would have to be accepted if it's in the list. It would have to be accepted be, by town meeting. meeting right. Nonetheless, I'll find out. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so that. Um, so this does that go to town meeting or go to the board, uh, Lisa? Well, it it depends. Most of the exemptions in that section of I think it's forty four fifty three something or other um, requires adoption at town meeting. But I need to look. Yep. So. Oh, look, can, um, Karen, can she, the veterans office has had her hand up. Can she speak? Am I allowed to talk now or no? Um, if she has information which would be beneficial yeah. and. Come on up, Why Karen. not? So I believe what um, you guys are discussing is the tax exemption, it, the $400, is for people who have a VA service-connected disability rating of between 10 and 90%. And then it goes up to $1,000 if you are 100% service-connected. Um, and so that's so that's a state, you know, everyone in Massachusetts. If you have a service-connected disability, you get $400. Now, the towns can um, go by town meeting and increase that amount. So I think that might be what you guys are talking about. Um, yeah, town council is going to look into that. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, so Lisa, if you could please have something for us before our next meeting, because sure. I'm going to put this on the agenda for next meeting to become the Purple Heart um, community. Um, okay, so now we have the approved the request for public property use at Manter Field. 
Um, I know Bill came before the rec committee last night to see if there was a conflict for March 29th at 5 at 5 p.m. Um, actually, Bill, I'm going to ask you to come up and explain to the board your rationale behind this. Sure. Bill DeMeo, 12 Orchard Street, Byfield. Um, what I thought my plan was before Jack pretty much decided what my plan was, was to have <clears throat> a discussion, not a celebration, on March 29th to communicate to the town, whoever showed up, clearly what the order of the Purple Hat was all about, why the town was doing it, we get national recognition, Lenny Mira was going to come for the citation, Senator the tower was going to come as well with a citation. Explain to them, whoever was there, veterans, citizens, leaders of the town, what this was all about. Okay? Show them the road sign, which was nicely, the money was donated by Donnie and three other citizens in Newbury, and myself. And it would be a communication process. And when we read proclamation on March 29th, we'd pay particular attention to the last paragraph. Also be it proclaimed that Newbury, Massachusetts will recognize August 7th annually as Purple Hat Day and urge our citizens and organizations to display the American flag as well as other public expressions of recognition and appreciation of our Purple Hat recipients. That's what I would talk about, that process. There was plenty of time between March 29th and August 7th to plan a significant event to honor people who received the Purple Hat from all wars. Jack alluded it as if it was something special for me to do it on March 29th. Do you know the significance of March 29th? Yes, I do. What is it? It's Vietnam Veterans Day. Exactly. And it would exclude somebody like Ronnie, uh, Donnie Jarvis, wouldn't it? I chose that day because I'd like you to tell me what has the town of Newbury done to recognize veteran, Vietnam veterans on March 29th? I don't, I don't know. Can you tell me, Mike? All I know is when I came aboard, I started doing veterans events on Veterans Day on, and helping with Memorial Day. Yeah. But the town was not doing anything. Okay, so we have had, we have had events since I got on board. Okay. I, rec I recognize that. Right, but all I'm saying specific is specific to March 29th. I'm no, talking specific okay, to March because, 29th. That's why I chose. If there's every every other when you turn around, every other day is gonna. Every day there's probably seven things attached to the day. Very good. Okay, Very good. we had the Vietnam Wall in. I, Mike, I understand that. I appreciate that. Okay. I just let, think, let me just explain. I chose March 29th because it had some significance. Not because I was in Vietnam, okay? March 29th, we're talking about the proclamation and scheduling an event in August, August 7th, to identify and honor Purple Hat recipients as far back as we can possibly think. Uncles, aunts, daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, from every branch of the service, not Vietnam veterans only, okay? That was the intention. So uh, clearly, I'd like that to be displayed in Newbury Chatter when Jack gets back. That's the reality of the situation, okay? March 29th was simply a communication to the community to explain the proclamation, what the Purple Hat meant, and to work on forming a committee or whatever <coughs> to, to uh, tie this all together in a celebration on August 7th. I would be delighted if Jack Rubicki would channel some of his energy and join that committee and help schedule that event rather than just be critical of what I'm trying to do. My question real quickly, as a liaison to the board that Karen leads, I knew nothing about it, okay? And no, you knew nothing I about do, I knew nothing about this date, March 29th, until I got my packet. You don't discuss that at, at your Eastern Essex? Uh, it hasn't been brought you? up. Wow. The March 29th. That's a shame. That's a shame. No, it hasn't been. 
That's a shame. Well, like I said, you know, right now it's budget season. Well, this is my little way. Right, but it's like but we doing feel, doing something on March 29th of significance to the community. I, I'll I'll just tell you right out, okay. I think it's a political stunt yeah. when you're running for election. I disagree. Motion just, to approve. Objection. Um, I've, I hold have on, hold on a discussion. second. Hold on a second. We ha what we have before us is a public property use. Yeah. It's not going to get into a political, a political me melee. It's not the time or the place. And quite frankly, it it casts a long shadow on on veterans who have gone to all the wars and since George Washington, as Jack said, and it's. It's shameful, and I'm not going to allow it here. I'm not going to allow it here. That we have a public property use. Um, if this was, if Bill was uh, um, running a marathon or a bike race, and somebody was coming into town, you know, we what, wouldn't ask that person for the bike race to change the date and change this and change change that. If that person were running for selectman, would would you allow them to come in and do whatever they want? This. I believe this all began last fall, if I remember correctly. It's November, on our... November 23rd is when I presented it. Yeah, on November 23rd. I have, a, I have, a, can I have a question. What happened to the rec committee last night? Mm. The rec committee doesn't have any any um, the, the, I, conflict. I, I, okay, well, I I tried to find it on on YouTube, and what, did they record it? Oh yeah. Okay, I didn't. It was not up yet. Well, it'll be up. Okay, but all I'm saying is, why was the green? They said the lower green was. I, I just and I have. So a, Mike, again, I've got to go back to this is. Right. This is. But why not? Why not the lower green? This well, well th we got, that's a conversation that you can have with Mr. Well, DeMeo but later. What, no, but it's, it's, it's not it, up it to does, us to change what the request is. I right. don't. I don't understand the hijacking. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand I don't, it I'm either. I'm just asking a question. Why was the lower green excluded? Because that's where all the well, monuments. Why are. did you? I guess, Mr. DeMeo, why did you choose? I made a motion this to approve. Can we get a second no. so we can discuss properly? Bill, Bill, I, I got to, I, I got to, I got to be honest with you guys. You know, my dad was lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. This kind of is the this 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 bothers me. This meeting bothers me intensely. I hate to even be involved in this stuff. It bothers me intensely, especially what's going on overseas right now. Absolutely. I I, I just don't. I don't personally want to even be involved in the vote. And that's that's this why is, I have a motion to move it. The no, I for the reasons from the I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, with, I'm not talking 7th, about what you and Mike which, are talking about. The whole thing bothers the purple, me. The purple implications, the whole gosh darn thing. I bothers me. That. You got someone that wants to go out and try to do something to bring awareness, and we're making it political. Welcome to politics. Uh, Sinful. So. I, 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 under, I understand why most people don't want to. Be on a committee in the town. Well, because if you disagree, you get thrown off. <clears throat> that's the truth. I get I'll, I get multiple examples if you like them. So, there was a motion. I made a motion. It was seconded. Would you no, change? He it. made a motion. No, I we can't change somebody else's event. That person has to change. Of it. course we can. No, we can't. Yes, yeah, we, we can. can. We we vote we vote to allow them the use. Why can't we change the change the date? Hey, there's no conflict. There's no good reason. Of course, there's a conflict. There is a conflict. It conflicts with page 36, section two, of the personal personnel policy manual. Political activity. No officer or employee of the town shall use their office, authority, or influence for the purposes of interfering with an election or affecting the results thereof. So it means <laughs> this has the appearance, and it, you know, you're right, it shouldn't have the appearance of what a you, political, of what, a poli I'm happened? not finished, of a political stunt because Mr. DeMeo is running for selectmen. It, and it, it smacks as being a cute, little, a cute little play, and the voters don't like cute plays. And I am actually doing you a favor, Mr. DeMeo, by suggesting a change of date so we get out of this whole election time cycle. So I'm trying to get you votes like these three are trying to get you elected. Um, I'm doing you a favor. It, it removes all of the political things if we put it on August 7th to include all veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan instead of having a meeting for an hour for publicity. I think we know what, 
what's going on with the. You expect me to give a campaign speech? No. Is that what you're implying? No. No, no, and I will. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But I will, I will respond to that. I, I didn't come here to debate you people, okay? okay? No, okay. No, I just no, want to know if I can use the field on, so, on March 29th. So, that's, that's the so, issue. Okay, so we have a motion. Ju Julie, can you second read that? it? Yep. JR, where do we oh. Where do we stand? Uh, I'll tell you where I stand. Wait a minute. Let, nope. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Jeff. I want to hear what the motion is. JR moved to approve the public property use request, and you had seconded. Okay, now we're under discussion. Okay. Any legal implications that you see, Lisa? I mean, first of all, I mean, Lenny and Bruce Tarr won't go now. They've destroyed anything you want to do anyway, Bill. I'm sorry, Bill. You know, it's yeah. just, you know, it is what it is. I have no problem with the location of this event. It has a lot to offer. There's plenty of parking, there's a bathroom, and there's beautiful scenery there. Um, I have no problem with the date. Sometimes we do things differently in Newbury. It doesn't have to fall in lockstep with national events. Um, I don't see any problem with this. And I don't know why some people are trying to politicize this. It, it's, it, it, I, I feel disgusted and, and maybe I'm out of touch, but I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't understand it. This isn't the place for politics. The guy's trying to do something to bring this town together instead of divide it. Disagree. The hell are we doing? Can I make a suggestion? Miss Evie made a motion before your motion. What was your motion? To change the date. To, I, and, to I have second it, it, and I seconded that. To have it on, you have that on August 7, 2022, which is Purple Heart Day, and, and it's moving it from March 29th, which is the Vietnam Veterans Day to the Purple Heart date of August 7th, 2022. And you're absolutely right, we should not politicize this, and I'm trying to remove it from being political to put it on the date that it should be, as according to Ms. Taylor, the uh, veterans uh, officer suggested when she addressed us earlier. So, so you know, I'm I, being accused I, of being political. I'm trying to remove it from politics, because this, you're right, this isn't right. These veterans, they, they sacrifice their limbs, their lives, and we should honor that. And it shouldn't be used as a political pool to get some notoriety for someone who's running for the Board of Selectmen. I'm trying to help and make it less political. So um, I'm not going to call that vote because that would be like, we can't, this, this is a request made for public property use. We can't dictate how this applicant uses our property. I challenge the ruling of the chair then. Right. I'll second. One question, Lisa never got a chance to answer my question. Does this seemingly have, even though, I mean, I didn't think of it politically. I honestly never even entered my mind. That's why I'm so- It didn't enter my mind I'm until very, Jack very ran and raved about it Disappointed last night. in this. It's okay, doesn't matter. Oh, but do oh, we have- Hold on, let him yeah, her answer him. With what you've heard, and what Jerry and Mike have presented along with Jack and everything else, do we now have what looks like something that we vote on that could have an impropriety for, for us? So uh, I think if you are a person walking in and it, it, there are people that run for office, there are people that are in office that hold public events for public information on public property all the time. That doesn't make them political. It, political and the violation of conflict of interest law, the violation of the campaign political finance law, the reference to the personnel bylaw, is if there were signs up there, if people were giving political speeches for election, it doesn't, this is, a, it appears to be a veterans event that Mr. DeMeo read the end of the proclamation to talk about the preparation of the, of the uh, Purple Heart Day. Um, I, I, I have to say, based upon everything I've heard, it does not appear to be a conflict at all. Ms. Mead, you haven't commented on the date, though, right, right a month before the local um, election? I, you don't think I, that's I think a, it could be the day conflict? of the election or the day before the election. I don't, I don't think that's the issue. I think it is. Like, well, one, it of my, is. one of my issues always has been the New Report News has always favored things, okay? When, when you ran for the last election, you were on the front page twice. He was in the front page already once, and that's when I knew the candidate was chosen. It's like, the bottom line was, 
It will be another front page of free advertising for his political event. And I'm sorry. I, I carried a wreath to the moving yeah. wall, and that was a political event on no, my part. No, I'm just saying. Back in September. But I'm saying. You even have a dream all of the putting people, paperwork. Of all the wreaths. people, of all the people that they could have taken the picture of, they had you because I'm telling you, there was a there's a link between the old editor and in the town, and it's like I said, that was been told to me. Okay, so that's that has nothing to do with public property use. I know, but it does. Um, it, Bill, it after all you've heard tonight. Johnny. Do you still mm -hmm. want to move forward with your event on March 20, 29th? I'm really disappointed that I have to answer that question. I am too. Okay. I'm really disappointed in the town. And right now, I wish I had never come up with a suggestion of making this town a Purple Hat community because I think you value politics more than you do recognizing veterans. Thanks. Sorry. If that's. Can I respond to that? No, um, no, Mike. Um, what, are you going to give him the last day? So is this going to, are we Excuse going me. to withdraw I this? I challenge the, the chair, your ruling. Which was? Julie did the date. And yeah, you said yeah, no. You didn't allow my motion. A duly seconded motion. You don't have the authority to do that, Madam Chair. You do I have. don't, and I'll ask town council to, to advise on this, but I don't see how we can ask an applicant to change his event. You just did. How we, no, I asked him if he wanted to withdraw. Oh, okay. I didn't withdraw, ask him if he change. wanted to change it to another date and, and do all the legwork that has to happen to do all that stuff. That's not the town, I don't believe that's the town's role. I think that we just approve public property use. And that's it. We can't, if, if there was a bike race coming through or um, a, a marathon coming through, I mean, we either deny or we accept. We can't say to them, well, we really don't want it on this date. I want you to go back and do it on this date. You do all the advertising. You change everything that you have done in place, and then you can come back. Then why did I you mean, check with the rec committee last night to see if the, there was a conflict Mr. and you were going to change it? If that, was, no, right? no, he wouldn't have been able to use this. If there was so soccer games, on, that he wouldn't have Let's been able do to this. use this. Let's field. do this. Jerry Heavey, what was your... Uh, Jerry, what My was your... motion was to change the date from March 29th to August 7th. Right. I don't think we can do change that. Change the date meaning what? To what? August who's going to run who's going to run the event out there? The same people who are running it now. Who, no, do you, do you think Bill's going to run it? I should hope so. Perhaps the veterans Why don't you ask him, him if you want ask him if he wants to run. Mr. Right Vicky can run it. Yeah. Maybe he could, and he'd probably do a very good job too. Well, now you now this has really gotten to be great. So, perfect. Um, perfect. Lisa, there's a challenge of my ruling. I don't know. Well, I I don't um, I don't have the rules of the board here, but typically, you ask for. I didn't hear the recognition of the motion and the second. I heard the chair recognize a motion from Jr. and a second yourself. Um, so it's. I believe it's up to the board. I don't have. I don't have your rules in front of me. Play, so I don't I, know the I, I'd love to, to play the tape over. I said it, and she seconded it. She heard it. I know so my voice is. A do good I one. have the authority to dictate when somebody else, uh, when a thing comes before me, that to make him do it on another day and time? No, you you can't do that. You that's what. Well, that's what she's something. asking me to do. Well, so you have, you have two choices, Madam Chair. You can either vote on the motion that you've recognized or you can vote on the motion that Ms. Heavey says she's made and was seconded and see what happens with that and then go to your other motion. I mean, All right, we'll do it that way. So, Jerry, uh, can you restate your, unless, Julie, did you get it? Jerry's motion is to change the date from the March 29th to the August 7th for the event, for Mr. DeMeo's event. Is that what your motion yes. is? Yes. Okay, and Mike, did you sec second yes, that? Yes, Okay, I'll call a vote. All in favor? It, it's, it, Bill doesn't even, Bill hasn't said he's going to do it. You're I out of know. your minds. You're all out of your minds. I'm sure there are enough veterans in town who will, who will assist. 
I don't believe there's anything that says you declare yourself to be a Purple Hat town only on August 7th. There isn't. I believe I you can do it any day of the year. Well, okay? Well, I'll gladly collect some data you can celebrate and supply Christmas that data show. to you people, okay, of, of when other towns have declared themselves as Purple Hat towns. Well, what's wrong with August 2nd, the 7th, excuse me? That's the Purple Hot Day. Hey. Why do I have to wait to declare the town on August 7th? That's well, the Purple Hot Why can't I declare it tomorrow? Other towns well, have. We've, we've accepted Other towns it. Have. You don't need to even have this little celebration. We've accepted it. It is a Purple Hot Town. You, 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 have, you, you, have ha you haven't accepted, you haven't right, voted so, on it. So we I have, have excuse no, me. Haven't. All right, Mr. DeMayo, can you have take a seat, please? <clears throat> Jerry has a motion and a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. You haven't even got Bill. How can you, Bill hasn't even said whether he can do it. That's why I'm opposed to it. All right. I'm opposed to it. It's not going to happen. Okay. So now we have that motion's failed. So now, Julie, what's the second? JR had moved originally to approve the request from Mr. DeMeo, and you had seconded the property request as stated on his paperwork. Okay. Um, so, something makes me sick. Okay, let's take a vote on that. All, all in favor? Aye. May I, may I ask a question? No, you may not. This is the board talking. I would and, and we I, don't believe in democracy, sorry. I would love to say, I'll, I, I don't turn down property uh, requests anyway, so I'm not going to turn down this one. But you still don't know if Bill's going to even do it after this. Right. So, this is a so request for grant, public you're property not use. Grant, you're not going to grant something that someone's not going to yeah. do. So, you're not going to tie the property up if Bill's going to do it, then, that's a, then I'll vote for it. If he's not going to do it, then don't vote for it. To make a motion that we take, table it till the next meeting and then we discuss it. At the next meeting, and he can make it his he can make his mind up. Maybe the Boston Globe will be in here you know, by the time you get done with this one. No, probably. I second your motion, Mr. Doyle. Well, do we have to finish? Well, she now there's a motion to table it. Is it something new? Yeah. Come on up. I, I started this process to declare Newbury a Purple Hot Town, and I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to have a celebration. I'm not going to sign up to have a celebration or do anything on, on August 7th, based on what I hear this evening. Okay? August 7th? August 7th. We'll do it August 7th. Don't worry. Oh, I will not do it August I, 7th. Well, look, that will do you it. can choose to do it if you like. Fine. I will get the town declared a Purple Hot Town, get that na re recognized nationally, and that's all I'll do. Okay, so this, do you want to withdraw this? I withdraw it. Okay, so I move to pass on the request for public property use on Manter Field. We're going to pass over that. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we have a business license renewal for Channel Street, Pierre, DBA, Barker's, Barber, 89 Hanover Street, Unit 1A for dog grooming. Motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we have clam license. William licenses. Uh, Mr. Fettino is here. I see him in the back room. Hi, Peter. How are you? Um, I have a question about this before I, we move to vote. Um, do you have any concerns with any? Come on up. Hi, I'm Peter Fatino. I'm chairman of the Fish Commission in Newbury. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. Do you have any anything that you want to 
tell us about the, this list? Or is no, we're really happy with it. We have about three or four new clamors, so our numbers have gone up this year. We're real happy with that. Oh, fabulous. As far as the clam licenses go, everything's in order. Everybody had their appropriate identifications and residences, so we're looking good. Price of clams are up. Everybody's happy as clam at high tide. <laughs> um, I do want to thank the town if they're going to go into that green crab. Um, you're going to put a motion, I guess, into the town, town, town meeting. meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, and the uh, fish commission to support that. We've spoken about it. Okay, great. Did you have many people partake in that? You had some guys doing we it? We have three guys, um, two to three guys. One guy's now a lobsterman. He may not be doing it anymore, but we have at least two that have been doing it, and we had one that was doing it and wasn't even able to sell the product. I was going to say, yes, like, what are they doing just, with it? He did it just to keep the... Keep the crabs. Keep right. Them up, yeah. Yeah. So, a, little, a little history on that for everyone, um, and I'm not saying this because it's something that I was part of, but we initiated some of the money for green crab with the studies that Peter Fippen and I do on the restoration of the green marsh. And the, the great marsh runs into tremendous implications of predation from the amount of green crab that we have in it. So we put forth this idea of subsidizing some of the people in the towns that clam that are out in boats to capture the green crab and traps and either put them into certain land, well, landfills, the compost place, let's say, in Ipswich, or find a culinary. They're eaten in Europe, and they're eaten as soft shell clams, and everyone loves them in Europe. If we could get it going here, then these things would come under control. They eat our soft shell clams. They supposedly burrow in the banks. They do all these things that, and they've been around a long time. So. This green crab trapping program was established, I think, about a decade ago, and the state always said that they were going to only participate in subsidizing it for a certain amount of time, and that the towns were going to take over in helping participate and sponsor the clamors to at least buy some traps to get them out there, you know, as a way of reducing the numbers of green crabs. Now. Green crabs have become maybe a good deal now because they sell them to the Tatog fishing industry during the season. But most of the guys that are trapping green crab also go a lot longer than just the use of June and July and maybe early August. They're, they're doing it all season. So they're trying to find ways to really get it. We need to get them out of the system. So that's how this all came about. And we all talked about maybe being able to, I think Essex has it now. I think Gloucester's putting it in. And Ipswich just has it for a long, a long time. They've had years, yeah. So we were the only ones, kind of, and Raleigh's going to probably do something too. We were the only ones kind of lagging behind. So that's how this all got put in place with the good work of PETA. Well, mm -hmm. not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, Peter, I have a question. You have on this paper here, there's two people that are, are under their state license, it says pending. Yeah, those would be new fellows. They have to get their town license before they can get their okay. license from the state. Okay. And even if they tried to get it first, it, it's such the state's really slow this year on coming back with the uh, certificates. Okay. Other question? Yes. Um, some of the um, <clears throat> clamors paid $300, some 100 What's well, How did you if you're a student or if you're an old guy, you get, you get to pay less, yeah. Wow, be a good deal for me then. Yeah, you. <laughs> it's just, it's just what I want to do now. Yeah. <laughs> Non-commercial, if you're old, you get it for free, so. Yeah. Any other questions for Pete? Um, okay, so I'm gonna read these, go down the list. Um, I'm gonna take them as one yes. whole list yeah. if you I'm gonna read yours from any one with the last name called we are no closer <laughs> a few of them here, but just <laughs> because Yeah, okay. So um, I'll go down I'll call the first five till we get to Colby and then um, I'll vote those, then we'll vote that the Colby's and then we'll come back and vote the others. Just call a hold if you want to hold a name for some reason. Um, so did you, do we have a motion? Do I have a motion to approve these yet? Should, motion to approve. Okay. Um, uh, Kyle Adams, 42 College Cottage Road. Frank E. Bennett, 131 High Road. 
Peter Britz, 70 Pine Island Road, Kaylee Foley, 9 Bittersweet Lane, Gus Campitelli, 12 Main Street, Tim Castine, 6A Rogers Lane. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Jay, you want to recuse yourself from these here? Mm -hmm. um, ben Colby, 158 Elm Street, Charles Colby, 142 High Road. Uh, oh, yeah, why don't you? Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, so Ben Colby, 158 Elm Street. Charles. Oh. I don't understand how come we're locked in. That's what I said. One day. Okay, so uh, Ben Colby, 158 Elm Street. Charles Colby, 142 High Road. Charles Colby Jr., 56 R Central Street, Byfield. Uh, Charles A. Oh, Gavin Colby, 56 R Central Street, Byfield. Laura Colby, 171 Hay Street. Uh, Mason Colby, 56 R Central Street, Byfield. Nicholas Colby, 30 Central Street. Uh, Robert Colby, 171 Hay Street. Uh, Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, can you get them? Yeah, can you get them? Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't get out of here from here. My help is in your chest. I'm here alone. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. I'll go get them. I'm going to pick up with um, Leonard Dobson, 12 right rear old point. I'm going to assume that's Neil Conley. Oh, sorry. Neil Conley, 39 Low Street. Uh, Leonard Dobson, 12 right rear road, uh, right rear, I'm going to assume that's old point road. Um, Jay Dodge, 45 Fruit Street. Uh, Joshua Dodge, 45 Fruit Street. Uh, David Elwell, 48 Fruit Street. Douglas Foley, 9 Bittersweet Lane. Zachary Fournier, 12 Wayside Ave. Robert A. Fournier, 15 Spring Hill Road, Byfield. Emmett Hall, 46 Low Street. Fred Hoistrat, 35 Old Raleigh Road. Dan Iwanowitz, uh, 14 Wayside Ave. Jeffrey Janvrin, 32 Forest Street. Cole, Neil, and Ross Lochak, all at 113 Main Street. Uh, Alexander Maxson, 7 Myers Lane, Noah Merrow, 131 High Road, Peter Morin, 33 Spring Hill Road, David Morse, 119 Main Street, <coughs> Cody Nixon, 53 Plum Island Turnpike, Corey Nixon, 53 Plum Island Turnpike, Michael T. Nixon, 53 Plum Island Turnpike, oh, more triplets, okay. Casey <laughs> O'Brien, 2 Church Street, uh, William Papoulis, 48 Cottage Road, Samuel Richard, 35 Old Rowley Road, John Short, 120 Main Street uh, in Byfield, Will William Short, 145 Main Street, J uh, John K. Thistlewood III, 26 Central Street, Peter A. Thistlewood, 26 Central Street, Jim Welch, 10 Withington Street, Robert West, 9 Church Street, Russell West, uh, Timothy West, all of 9 Church Street in Byfield, Thomas White, 36 Downfall Road, Jacob Wood, and Stephen Wood, 9 Lund Street in Byfield. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, sir? Yep. Do you think you'll have more? You usually have a few more stragglers coming in, right? Yeah, hopefully, right, because you get an extra $100 for all the late guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> and as a Vietnam veteran, and I'm here, and I've listened to this, I want to thank you for trying to do what you did on Vietnam Veterans Day. Uh, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, next. 
We have review and approve personnel policy manual updates. Uh, Mark Leckman. Thank you. Mark Leckman, 28 Riverview Drive. Here is the chair of the HR board. Just wanted to give you a, a brief overview of, of what I think was in your package a week or so ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in, in periodically reviewing pieces of the, uh, the policy as it relates to things that are happening in and around uh, the town, uh, we realized that some of the wording in the retiree benefits section uh, needed some updating. And uh, we needed to do that so that it would conform with the Essex County Retirement Systems language, which it needed to map to. Uh, the personal policy uh, was written as a living document, meaning that it would need to change uh, as laws change, as statute changes, uh, as our policies and procedures change. Uh, and since it hadn't been completely reviewed and updated since its creation in 2019, we took the opportunity to review the entire document along with uh, members of town council's office to ensure that all the additional editing was done at the same time to make it convenient. Uh, I just want to take a minute and, and recognize Diane Doyle's efforts uh, in this process. Diane is the town's treasurer collector and a member of the HR board for a number of years <clears throat> and she took it upon herself and spent a tremendous amount of time uh, pouring through that document multiple times it's a 63 or 64 page document that we're very proud of uh, it took us a long time to create it three four years ago uh, but again we recognized that it was time that it would get updated and this was an opportune time to do that so Diane from all of us <laughs> Thank you for the Thanks, yeoman's Diane. work you did. It was, Thank you, uh, Diane. Uh, just a tremendous effort on her part, along with that of town council's office. Uh, most of the other changes that were made are what we would call wordsmithing changes. Uh, you know, things that are basic, things that needed updated, modernization of, of, um, uh, of language as it relates to the Town Administrator Act, so forth and so on. Uh, the only other area of significance that was changed was the second point, uh, which is the language that related to compensation of non-exempt employees during times of emergency closure of offices. And as we reviewed that language, there was some ambiguity in it that required some updating, and we also wanted to make sure that that language adhered to the mass fair labor standards policies, which it now does. Uh, so what we have in front of you tonight is those edits that were made and reviewed along with town council's office. Uh, based on the personnel bylaw of the town of Newbury, it was required of us as the HR board to vote to bring it forward to you, but we have no jurisdiction over the language. It's up to the select board to agree or, or to accept or, or, or not accept, if you will, the new language. So if you choose to do so, which we hope you will, then what will happen is that, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think what's in front of you is not completely formatted properly. So I think what will happen is, is if you agree with the changes to the language, it will let it go back to town council's office for formal, uh, for formatting, excuse me, and then brought to you perhaps at the next meeting just so you can officially vote on an acceptance, so. Does this have to go to town meeting too? No. No, okay. uh, one of the reasons it's going to you is that that was changed at town meeting, Mike. I think it was two or three years ago. It was decided that, again, because this is a living document and it's going to change from time to time, what we didn't want is have to wait right. six months or a year to go to, to go to town meeting. We wanted to be in your purview. We bring it forward. We voted on it. Uh, we voted unanimously that, that these were the appropriate changes, and now it's in your jurisdiction to decide if you want that adopted. Questions? Tracy, I'm Tracy. Jerry. Um, I, I noticed throughout it, uh, wherever it uh, gave um, a function to the select board, uh, the select board was removed and the town administrator right. was inserted. And to me, it's the select board that makes policy and the town administrator administers it. So. I don't know why all of these changes were done. It seems to me that's in violation of the um, TA uh, 
ordinance that we did in uh, 2008 and 2019, which states that the administration, uh, this uh, the board of selectmen, um, the administration of all the fiscal, prudential, and municipal affairs of the town shall remain vested in the executive board headed by the board of selectmen. So I don't know why the select board suddenly has no work to do. I mean, why have a, a select board? Well, as a layperson, my understanding is that the only times that that language was changed is only related to issues that fall under the jurisdiction of the town administrator as opposed to the selectmen based on the town administrator form of government. Perhaps town council can speak to that. So I can briefly, my partner, Kate Federoff, is the one who head up, headed up the effort. So if you read on Ms. Heavey in the Town Administrators Act, mm -hmm. there's a very specific section about the authority of the town administrator. Okay. And so the changes in the HR policy relate directly back to the Town Administrator Act in that section. It has nothing to do with the broad authority of the Board of Selectmen relative to fiscal year, uh, excuse me, fiscal policy, general policy, and things of that nature. So changes were related directly back to the town administrator's authority given in the town administrator's act. Um, I'm happy to have Kate provide a direct reference to you for all of those changes. Uh, it's not a problem, but we had to do that. I mean, we had to do that direct reference anyway. So if, if you're concerned about that, happy to do it, but that's exactly the, the reference. Okay. Yeah, I would appreciate sure. those. Any other questions? Just want to say thanks for all the hard work on okay. everybody involved. Good job. Yeah, yeah, thank Diane. I was just along for the ride. On this. It was a <laughs> task set I had to get excited about. <laughs> thank you, Diane. It had to be done. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to accept this policy. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now this will come before us one more time, right? That's what, after it's all. We're gonna reformat it and I'll provide the outline to um, Select and Heavey. Okay. Okay, so now under old business, we have to execute the right of entry agreement for Larkin Road. And we have town council here that's gonna explain this to us. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. You might recall at the last meeting when you approved the intermunicipal agreement, which was the agreement between the town of Georgetown and the town of Newbury relative to the installation of municipal services uh, that we referred to uh, the right of entry to allow the contractor and developer to actually do the work on the culvert. So um, I've provided a right of entry and as, a, as an overview, um, the right of entry, first of all, describes the area in which the, um, and I've also provided all the attachments too, so you should have received those all last week. The right of entry describes, describes a specific area in which the um, work is gonna be done, and that's identified on the plan on Exhibit A, which is a proposed culvert area or something of that nature, that's the, the name of it, um, existing culvert to be replaced, and there's a specific identified area on the plan. And then it talks about what work is to be done. And so um, in, uh, in relationship to the concern that um, Select and Heavey had, which we said was gonna be included in the right of entry, which is the approved plans, uh, the approved construction drawings, the Conservation Commission order conditions and the extension, the approval of the Army Corps of Engineers, and the signed off plans from the Department of Transportation are all included as the plans. That includes the permit uh, in order for the work to be done. So that's the scope of work. So it's limited to that. Uh, this document also has the uh, developer taking and assuming the risk for all the work that is to be done, including all the employees, assignees, and consultants. It provides an indemnification of the town. It requires the developer to insure the town as well and to have a certificate of insurance, which we've already been provided and updated. And it also uh, requires this to be done at the sole cost and expense of the developer, and it requires the developer to provide a surety to the town to be assured that the work is performed uh, and the bridge is, uh, the culvert is complete in the amount of $300,000. So that either can be in a bond or other form of surety. Uh, I was informed by the developers council today that they would choose a tripartite agreement. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a tripartite agreement is, essentially it's an agreement with a bank where the bank says, we're gonna hold X number of dollars 
in this instance, $300,000 until the work is done. They can't release that money until the town signs off on it. So it's, it's a bank holding money in an account uh, noted as the uh, developer's account, but the bank agrees not to release the funds until the town signs off on it. So that's part of the agreement as well. It ties back to the uh, intermunicipal agreement timeframe that the work has to be done in 150 days, um, and that's in here too. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Lisa. Um, any questions from the board? Yeah. Jerry. Um, in the first paragraph, that's not a typo. The, the contractor is Godzilla. Um, I don't pick the name of the developer. But it, it does read Godzilla. That's correct. Okay, great. Thank you. I thought, it was, I thought I misread it. I had to read it a few times. That makes two of us. <laughs> okay, JR? Any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. I know this was a lot of work. Um, so I, I do want to let the board know that um, there's been some questions uh, or some concerns that we've all heard from the neighbors regarding traffic mitigation and um, there will be a, there's a meeting scheduled coming up uh, not this week but next with the neighbors in public safety and um, what was reading it's this week the 17th I thought no, it's the 17th. Oh, it's I yeah. so the 17th so yeah, it's no it's not a select board meeting I didn't post it where is it it's going to be healthier, probably right, right in here. Well, we should post it if we all. Seven? Yeah, in case everyone in case post it. shows up. Um, I'll talk to Julie about having it posted. Yeah, I would, I would definitely. Um, so that's. So can, can it, the topic of the meeting is. No, it's just going to discuss traffic. Okay. Uh, with, with the neighbors. With the neighbors. So, the, so the, what's. To, what? Just to just to hear their concerns. So it's March seventeenth. No. What's yes. Yep. Yeah. What time? <laughs> 12 noon. 12 noon. It's a great time for a lot of people at work. Right here. So, um, traffic mitigation, we have heard it, and there will be some mitigation done for it. Um, so, can I have uh, a motion to accept this right of entry agreement? Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? Discussion. Jerry. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to vote against it because I, I think we're putting a, again the cart before the horse. You know, we we're, we're meeting the people after we've signed two documents last time in this document, and frankly, there are three three hundred and thirty-five people who are residents of the town who say they don't want it as opposed to, you know, the benefit to the contractor and taxpayers. There's no benefit to the contractor on this. Excuse me, Mr. Conte. Uh, and I apologize. I, 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 no, Chair, excuse I apologize. me. No, no, thank you. But I sit here and take abuse every I, time. I, I I'm sorry, but no. I'm thank sorry, you. my statement, you interpreted my simple statement as abuse. I, it wasn't my intent, sir. But, but you're directing it to me. There's no advantage to us. I would rather not do the bridge. I'd okay. save money. Listen, well, then, listen, stop. Stop. Why are we here? stop, stop, okay, stop. You're not going to vote on it, okay. I am not voting on it. You're abstaining, on. okay. I'm not um, abstaining, I'm, I'm voting yeah. against okay, it. Okay, so hold on, then when, let's, take, let's take the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, so, Jerry, you can have a conversation with Mr. Colantoni outside after this meeting, if you, if you like. My phone number is everywhere. Call me anytime you'd like. I'd be glad to talk with you. Um, next, we have the town administrator's report. Do you have a report? You just gave us one last week. I don't have a report um, tonight, Madam Chair, but I, I, if, if I may, um, it was brought to my attention earlier in the week that there was a concern that I have, I may have misspoken at the March, I believe it was the March 1st select board meeting. Um, Madam Chair, when you asked me directly, we were discussing the fire department proposal for replacing their command mm -hmm. vehicle. You asked me, and I went back and watched it just to be clear, um, if it had been through the capital planning process. And I responded in the affirmative. 
And furthermore, Selectman Heavey asked me if it had been approved, the ARPA funds were approved, and I acknowledged in the affirmative as well that it had. So I wanted to clarify a couple of things that are going on simultaneously right now. First, um, the town is currently engaged in a long-term capital planning endeavor. You may recall we had a, a kickoff, I think it was back in October, um, we, I received grant funding from the community compact agreements. We engaged the Collins Center and they were helping us. Our last one was done, I believe it was released in 2018. So we're engaged in doing the update. Back in December, the police chief, fire chief, DPW director, and IT director all presented to the Collins Center um, and that that application was included for replacement of that vehicle. At the time, it was presented as a replacement of $80,000 for a 2012 Ford Expedition, and the replacement was um, projected to be in 2025. Since that time, obviously, um, we've had some issues occurring, not catastrophic, um, but issues electrical issues in nature and in consultation with the fire chief, we decided that it made sense to accelerate it. So at that point, it was brought to you for action. The capital planning committee is separate from our long range capital planning endeavors that we're engaged in now. Their mission is among other things, providing a list of town assets, protecting the town's capital investment, minimizing future maintenance and replacement costs, and preparing an annual capital budget. That annual capital budget, they take action in their meetings for those items that are going to be appearing on the annual town meeting warrant. So we have the, the annual issues as well as the long term. It's not on their agenda. It doesn't appear on their agenda until the 10th, okay? In addition to that, we talked about ARPA grant funding. Um, and with the issuance of the final rule, things became a little bit simpler for our communities. Um, it allowed Newberry and it allowed us to claim the first 10 million of all of our fiscal recovery grant money as revenue loss. That was our entire, I mean, we had less than 10 million, we had 2.1 million, so all of our funds were, were eligible for the revenue loss category. That allowed us to use funds for general government um, services, construction, road building, maintenance, health services, um, other general government administration, and public safety, in particular purchases of vehicles. We talked about how those funds had to be committed um, by 2024 and completely expended by 2026. So our ARPA grant applications we kind of took a belt and suspenders approach rather than just me approving them and the town accountant approving them. In addition, we hired an outside consultant, Clifton Larson Allen LLP, to assist us in making those determinations. So before anything comes before this board, it's already gotten their approval. And that was what I was trying to explain to you, Selectman Heavey, um, when you questioned twice about whether it was ARPA approved. So that, that was what I meant. Um, as far as working with them, we have to follow AICPA's code, code of conduct. Um, we have a code of professional conduct, ethics, ethical principles of integrity, objectivity, professional competence and the likes, they all come into play. But I just wanted to make it clear that even though we're seeking their approval and they're giving us guidance on that, there's nothing anywhere that requires that the Capital Planning Committee approve a project before it can be granted ARPA, um, it can be granted funding under the, the ARPA program. So I hope with these comments I make things a little bit clearer. Um, nothing that I said was meant to confuse or mislead anyone at the table. So my question when I asked about capital, if it's gone through capital planning, um, I know I remember seeing a schedule mm -hmm. of all the capital assets that the town has and it's on mm -hmm. a rotating replacement schedule. Yep. This, this um, fire truck and the police vehicle actually are already on that schedule, right? So they've already been, uh, I want to call it through capital planning. The capital 
planning committee is aware that we own these assets and they're on a schedule to be replaced. There, that's what we're engaged in updating right now. We're doing yeah. our long-term capital plan. Okay, so it's yeah. not like we were buying a new vehicle, like a, an additional vehicle. This was something. That was my concern. That, but did you have any more clarifying no, questions? Uh, don't look at me. I wasn't. I didn't raise the issue about being confused. So. No. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll forward you the email. I got. It. Okay. Yes, there's one question. Yeah. yeah. Tr Tracy. Mm -hmm. Um, when you came to the meeting to, to about the 200,000 for the Palm Island bathhouse. I when I came to what? The meeting and you said that we could use the $200,000 for the bathhouse. Yep. Okay. The so when I was, I was filing that paperwork, yep. I found paperwork that you sent me on 8, 10, 20. Okay. And the price then was, we anticipate $125,000. So you're telling, in that short period of time, it went up from 125 to 200,000? I have all the documentation yeah. provided by the two DW years. director. Well, I um, mean, it's like, but the, I'm happy to, I guess. The, the town didn't vote it down. They did. You, they, no, I'm just talking about right, the inflation. Right, right, and right, you look right, at construction right. costs but in I'm the last saying, year. It's, like it's, a, it's a huge jump. Okay. Um, so we had some correspondence. Division of Marine Fisheries was scheduled, um, closing uh, digging schedule from February 17th to March 4th. We have a letter from Xfinity changing service once again. <laughs> Take it away and add um, As part of our ongoing commitment to keep you and our customers informed about changes to Xfinity TV services, we wanted to update you that effective March 31st, 2022, Fox Life will cease operations. Customers are receiving notice of this information in their bill. Please feel free to contact me at patricksheanscomcast.com should you have any questions. Um, we also received a notification from the MBTA. Uh, the MBTA liaison, um, is giving us an update on um, the upcoming spring service changes. Uh, the spring service changes will reflect the following to support ridership across the system, continue to preserve access and quality of service for transit critical communities, provide sufficient service for returning riders and increased travel, accommodate riders who are returning to in-person school or work, support new travel patterns and behaviors. Bus service changes will be effective Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and the new schedules will be posted in early March. For more information about bus, subway, commuter rail, and ferry service changes in the spring, please visit www.mbta.com backslash service changes. Um, and that's that. So, any meeting updates? Just one, Madam Chairman. Yes. Um, the Essex County Veterans Met. We got our final budget, which I ordered in this place. New Reese portion this year will be 31,267.72. Um, and I think Karen's left, but she's, it's been a tight year because we lost Hamilton to win them. And it's like, she did a good job keeping the budget down. So. Is I, that an increase to our budget? It, it, there's a slight increase, but it's like overall, it could have been worse. <laughs> Okay. So that just, if the board wants, I didn't make copies, but I'll pass it down. Okay. Um, I also want to. Um, um, I also want to uh, recognize that um, the town, as a member of the Essex County um, Veterans, Veterans Associate Group Association, um, we have to do an annual uh, report, an annual re review of the veterans agent, and Mike Doyle. As the liaison had submitted that, filled it out, and he submitted it back, back to them. Like I said, she, Karen, I can't speak out enough about her. She's dedicated. She's, she does everything she can for the veterans, and it's like I said, it's been a pleasure working with them. All right, thank you. Uh, there's one more correspondence that Julie brought to my attention. It must have came in the mail today. It's a great blue heron. Jeff. Um, dear Alicia, Jr., Jeff, Mike, and Jerry. Thank you all for your support of First Parish Newbury Food Pantry. Your visits to the pantry and phone calls meant so much to us. Your working together for the folks in need 
that you represent has been inspiring. Thank you again for believing in our mission and for the support you gave to get, this, get the COVID funds to us. God bless, Jane Merrow, First Parish Newbury Food Pantry. So, I'll just bless Wow, what they've done. They've done, a great, they've done yeah. a great job. Do we have any review of meeting minutes? We, I don't see any. Um, warrants, we have warrants to sign. Motion to sign warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Executive session, none. So let's adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.